Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the Saratech webinar, How to Manage Large Models and Computer Resources in NX NASTRAN. My name is Emmy Chiruso from Saratech and I am your host today. I would now like to introduce John LaCour, Saratech's NX NASTRAN professional who is based out of Houston. Okay, great. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about uh, analyzing uh, large models, and large models would be uh, large degrees of freedom. And if I could say the theme of this presentation is time, and this is what it's all about is time and turnaround time to run your models. Uh, here's kind of the, the agenda today, a very simple agenda. We're going to have a presentation and a, and a little demo. It's going to be quite small demo because it's, uh, it's not, we're not going to look at so much stresses and displacements and strain. Uh, we're going to be looking at our clock, and that's what we're going to look at today. And then a conclusion, and then we'll open it up for some questions. So uh, the beauty of FEMAP NX NASTRAN solution process is, is this uh, analyze right here. And th this is kind of the flow. It's a very simple flow where, uh, you know, you have your model, and, and uh, you hit the analyze button, and the little box to the right there, analyze, is your analyze button. And what... Uh, uh, FEMAP does is it writes an uh, NX NASTRAN deck and it sends it to NASTRAN and NASTRAN runs it. Uh, whatever the solution sequence is, it builds it, it puts your load cases in there, it puts your data request in there, and then it runs it and it pipes it back uh, to FEMAP. And that's that's the beauty of it. It's uh, FEMAP makes it a seamless process to uh, interface with NASTRAN, which is a worldwide recognized uh, analysis software package. And so that's uh, that's fine. Uh, to, to do with small models, uh, uh, you know, depending uh, how long you have to wait. If you hit the run uh, analysis button and you wait five minutes, that's not bad. But if you hit the analysis button and you have to wait uh, one hour or two hours for it to run, and that can happen, uh, especially if you're running transient analysis, it very easily can happen. Uh, I have hit the run button and I've had to wait six hours for it to complete uh, transient analysis. So in a typical uh, analysis uh, process, uh, with the seamless FEMAP. For small models, like I said, uh, this is uh, uh, the best way to do it. Just hit the analysis button and, and there's no problem. But for larger models, this process can be very time consuming. As I just got s finished telling you, I I've hit the button and had to wait six hours. And, uh, and, and so if I wanted to run other load cases and add load cases, or if I wanted to recover more data, I'd hit the button and wait another six hours. And this is really uh, uh, kind of ridiculous uh, and, and very time consuming and very inefficient. Uh, also, in some cases I've seen, uh, if uh, because I had so many uh, load cases, uh, they got a fatal, fatal error that said they exceeded the limit on load cases. So it might be you just can't run it because you have so many load cases. But the, the problem is, uh, is each time I change something, I add low cases, or most of the time it's data re adding low cases and data recovery, is I have I hit the analysis button, and what this thing's doing, it's going and starting from the beginning every time. And but you really don't have to do that. Now I'm going to come down in here to the uh, look uh, look into Nastran and see what's happening. And uh, we can see uh, that the analysis, uh, Nastran reads the analysis deck, and then it, tra uh, it transforms the, uh, the elements uh, into a mass and a stiffness matrix. And this is a very time-consuming process. Um, and if you don't really change your model, if you're, just, if you're just adding more load cases or you're doing more data recoveries and you hit the analysis button, it's going to take your deck and, and again, transform you know, all those uh, all those uh, bar elements or all the beam elements or all the uh, solid elements, it's got to convert it back to a matrix and it has to do a lot of operations on the matrix uh, to get it set up to run. Uh, and you don't really need to do that again if all you're doing is uh, doing load recovery or adding more load cases. Uh, and I've had this, you know, the next step it does once you get the matrix set, set up, it solves the matrix and it could be uh, a static solution, which is KX, you know, the KX equals P, where it solves for that. And of course, the X would be a matrix. Or or it could be doing a, a dynamic analysis. And I didn't put the dots on there, but it'd be a dynamic analysis. And the, again, the X is a matrix, but now it's a function of time. And it'd be the MX double dot, or the acceleration, and V dot, which would be the velocity and the stiffness and displacement equals uh, forces as a function of time, that's, that's a very time-consuming uh, process. It actually produces a lot of data. 
And then the next step after it solves that, it now ha has solved for displacements, and now we can do data recovery. We can have it just dump the displacements, uh, stresses, element forces, on and on, you know, whatever you ask for. So with large models, uh, doing, you know, starting out in a checkout and analysis run uh, could be time consuming, uh, you know, because you want to start out probably by putting 1G, you know, load in each axis and run it just to look at what, what your stress is to see if it looks realistic, check your boundary conditions on it. And each time the model is run, you have to start from the beginning. If you, and again, as I said, if you want to add low cases, you start from the beginning. If you want to recover more data, you have to start from the beginning. Uh, and if the data, uh, and this also, in some cases, you can create excessively large VMAP model files, uh, which makes VMAP sometimes unusable, unusable because they are so large. You know, the VMAP model is so large. So there is a solution that we can do to avoid uh, this. It's a very simple solution that uh, NASTRAN has, uh, and it's called doing a restart. Okay, and it and it the restarts in your analysis uh, manager. You know, if you open up your analysis manager, and I'll just do that in a little bit, uh, and go to your executive executive and solutions option, uh, a panel that's very rarely used or not a lot is done with this panel, but you can see where I have highlighted where you have the restart control and you have uh, two options there to do it to do a restart or uh, to save your database for a restart and then restart off of that database okay now what VMAP is going to do it's going to add a couple of cards to the master and deck which I have here it's uh, uh, normally you know without VMAP you'd have to write these things in here but this does it all for you and does all the uh, uh, managing of the um, of your data in the uh, in your files, and so the first one at the top there is what start what is a cold start is what it's called, and that actually is uh, uh, creating your database. And actually, all this thing is doing is saving your database because the the database is always created; it's just deleted at the end of the job. In this case, it saves it. And then uh, this one is uh, uh, signs the the master and the and the D ball and uh, it will read that back in and so what this contains this contains the information uh, from the previous run so exit out of this and go to uh, VMAP right here now I don't have a model in here I have built a model but I actually run this model many times and it's appropriately named restart and so this is uh, nothing special about it. Uh, what I built the model, I built the model with a lot of degrees of freedom to show you how long it takes to run this thing. It actually only has one load case in it. And so what I've done is I, as I come in here to the manager, my analysis manager, and I open this up, and I bring open this window up right here, and here is here's the restarts options right here. This is, this is about all you'll need to know for the for this NASTRAN demo is this restart option. What you're going to do when you first initially run this thing uh, is, you set, is you select this, save database for restart. It's going to put it into the directory where your files go, where your FO6, your FO4, your log files, your DAT files, uh, your uh, OP2 files, wherever that goes, this database will go there. Now, I don't want to really hit the OK, I mean, uh, the run, the OK and the run button because now it's going to say, OK, make a new database. It's going to start from the beginning. Uh, you'll see pretty soon, I think this took probably 15, 16 minutes, and I know we don't want to sit here for 16 minutes watching this thing uh, run. So uh, I'm going to go and select this. So what's going to happen is you're going to select this, you're going to say OK, then you're going to run it, and I'm going to cancel this. And then you're going to come over here and you're going to open up your file and you're going to see your databases right here after it gets finished. And this is the first run I did. And you can see I've made other runs and I'll show you the results from the other runs. But I've always run off of this database every time. So, so let's say I've now, I've now uh, made an uh, initial run. And uh, we'll talk about the, the run I made in just a little bit. And then I'm going to come back over here to my analysis manager and, and open it back up, open up the executive solutions. And so I've run it and now I'm going to select restart from previous analysis. And I open this up and there is, I select this, of course it's the only one there, I've been running it and I say okay and so we're done and we're ready to go. So it's, it's pretty simple. But, 
And, and again, this model purposes models as degrees of freedom. I wanted to put a lot of degrees of freedom and actually push push my computer uh, to the limit. I did push it to the limit. I pushed it to the memory limit. If I made it larger, then I would have run out of RAM and it would uh, it start sending it uh, using the uh, hard drive and that really slowed things down. So that's probably about the limit of, uh, of what I can do with this computer. So let me go back and let's look at some results here. Okay, so there's the model. It's, uh, this is the name of the model here. It had uh, about 173,000 uh, nodes in it and uh, that about uh, you know, 119,000 solid elements. Again, it's, it's degrees of freedom. Uh, the, the degrees of freedom was a little over half a million degrees of freedom. And so I ran a static solution. I had, uh, I had, I just put a, a one load on it. I ran a solutions 101, and I recovered displacements and stresses. I hit the analysis button. Uh, 15 and a half minutes is how long it took. Okay, so I ran it, and so now uh, I wanted to now I wanted to recover uh, grid point forces. Okay. And so if I went from the if I went and started from the beginning again just to recover, uh, it would be this plus some more time to recover the grid point forces. But so when I did the uh, when I did a restart and recovered uh, grid point forces out of the grid point forces, the runtime was only one minute and fifty three seconds, a reduction of thirteen minutes and thirty nine seconds, or an eighty eight percent reduction in time. Okay. So I didn't start from the beginning. Uh, I started, I just went in there and recovered more data. All the, all the data is in the database and it just goes in and does another data recovery. So let me go to this chart here, different run scenarios with this. I ran, uh, let's look at the run scenarios. The first one I ran is a solution 101. Uh, I had no load cases, no data recovery, okay? And so I ran it. You can see how long it took, 12 minutes and three seconds to assemble to assemble the uh, the matrix, and it even triangularizes the matrix to get it ready to do the solution to optimize the matrix. So, just just setting the matrix up to run is the, the majority, especially in a static solution, is the majority majority of time spent. Then I then I did a restart. I said I, I added one load case in here. I did a restart, but I'm not recovering any data. All I'm doing is running the load case and it took two minutes and 55 seconds to run the solution, which is a very short time compared to, uh, uh, to the others. And you gotta remember, I got a matrix that's a, that's a half a million by half a million, or actually a little bit larger than half a million. Uh, so you can see how fast it actually ran that solution. Okay, so, but yet no data recovery. Okay, so now I go back and I do a restart with the, uh, and again, all I, 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 all I did is go into my model and say add, the uh, load case and run it. I hit the run button and I came back in and the third line, uh, the same solution. I had the same load case. I asked for displacements and stresses and it took uh, one minute, 11 seconds to, uh, to do that run. And then I said, okay, I want, I now want grid point forces. I want to add that. So I went back in and selected uh, grid point forces, ran it, executed it. It took one minute, 15 seconds to run, to make that run. And just, uh, just to show you, I ran it uh, one more time. I asked for the same thing over again because now the data is all in the database. And I said, I re-ran re -ran the fourth solution uh, again, just re-ran the same thing, and it took 21 seconds. All I had to do is go in there and recover the data and bring it into FEMAP. So we can see how, how fast this uh, runs uh, when you don't have to re restart the whole thing and you actually use the uh, master and restart option. Now I want to go back to uh, to uh, my FEMAP here and just show you if uh, everything works out for me here. Uh, I'm going to open this up, and we're going to make sure that this, uh, and sure enough, I'm restart. I'm pointing to the right one, and I want to come over here to my boundaries, I do have a, a boundary condition. I do have a load case right here, and I do have an output. And these are the outputs, displacement forces, and the force balance. That's all I'm asking for. I've actually ran this before. It's in the database. And you can see it's uh, this is half a million degrees of freedom, and normally it would take a while, so I'm just going to hit the analysis button. And 
and what it's doing right now is translating it. It's translating uh, to uh, the, it's writing a deck and sending it to FeedMap. Now FeedMap has uh, Mastran has the deck, and it's actually running the deck. And we can see, look how fast it. It's uh, now what FeedMap is, or what Nastran is doing right now. It's comparing the database to the to the deck because it did write the deck. Okay, it's comparing the database to the deck, and it looks through it. And if if load cases change, it knows that, and it's going to rerun more solutions. And if I go and change the model, it's going to go in there and look and see that I changed the model, and it's going to go and and update the database, which means it's going to start from the beginning. Okay, look now it's finished. Uh, it took 20 seconds, 20 seconds to uh, to run that, and why? Because the run was already completed. Okay, is it's actually in the database and actually did not run. It actually went and did a comparison of the deck and said, hey, this is the same analysis, uh, the, and the data is there. It just recovered the data and sent it to uh, FEMAT. So, uh, conclusion: models uh, do not need to be recut. Uh, rerun to recover more data. You can use the uh, you can use the um, the restart. Uh, data re uh, recoveries can be performed in stages to reduce database size. You know, I didn't have to run all the. I mean, I only had one load case here, but I could have several load cases. I don't have to run them all at the same time. I could run them and put them into different files. And uh, one thing, even though I did hit the run button to recover the data that I already had in there, I had an, it produces an OP2 file, and I could just go with VMAP and say import uh, the data from the OP2 file, and I wouldn't even have to uh, uh, bring it in. Uh, restarts can be performed on a static, uh, normal modes, transient, and frequency response solutions, and, and, and the ones, uh, you know, the static normal modes, especially the transients are the, where you really get payback. From this, and we have to remember that uh, that the master and the D-ball is is where the data is, and you can archive these for future uses. That if uh, so that you don't have to uh, uh, keep run, rerunning your model uh, from the beginning. You know, if, again, I had a six-hour run, and I database that, and as long as I didn't change the model, and of course when I ran uh, the, I had my original model, and it would check and verify that it was the original model, and then it would do a, do the data recovery or add more load cases. Because as requirements mature, load cases are usually added. And uh, but again, you don't have to start from the beginning. So, so there's the it's, uh, restarts are very simple, very easy, and uh, and it can be very helpful, uh, and and it's essential actually, in my opinion, for very large models. I'll open up for questions. Thank you, John. Okay, we'll now begin the question and answer session. Okay, John, I do have um, some questions here. Someone was asking, if you change the constraints, does that make Nastran start over? Yes, it does. Yes, once you, when you, when you change your model, that is you change your elements, you can change a material, uh, you can change uh, uh, your, an element, you can move an element around, delete an element, add an element, or a constraint that changes your model and it starts it starts from the beginning. When you rotated the model, it disappeared and showed an outline. What settings did you use to accomplish that? Okay, that uh, you can't see my screen anymore. But uh, which why that happens? Why I'm doing that is uh, is because uh, on on complicated on models that have a lot of detail, uh, when you're rotating it, it it will rotate, you know, the whole model, and sometimes it really slows it down and and it skips around because it's saturating uh, the video card. So what you need to do is you need to go to. Um, oops, or are you all seeing my screen again? See so what you do is you go to your preferences and you turn off. Uh, you turn off. Um, trying to find out where that is, but it's in your preferences, and I actually can turn off uh, what is being uh, regenerated every time. And so that's that's why that disappears when I when I rotated it. And I do that just uh, what I do is I do that as you see it rotates. I'm not showing the elements when I'm rotating it, and and I'm just showing the outline of it so that my my video card is not saturated trying to redraw all that detail. Can NX Nastran access de databases with a space in the path? I read the uh, I I have read the book and it says it can't. Uh, but I'm going to 
Let me go back to my presentation here, and I do believe I have a space in the path, and it did do it. See right here? Okay. I read, I read that it can't do it. I, I've, I've read that, but it does it for me. So I guess the answer is yes, it can. Okay. How much memory can be utilized by Adena NX Advanced Nonlinear when using Windows 764 Pro? If I understand the question, is, the, is how much memory can be utilized uh, for advanced, uh, that is the RAM on your computer, uh, it will use as much uh, memory as there. And it, what it does is it, you can go look, it will take a guess, NASRAM will take a guess at how much memory you need, and then it will reserve that much memory in the RAM. You can always override that, okay? Uh, you, can, you can override that. So you can go tell NASRAM in, uh, in, a, in a NASRAM card, uh, to take as much memory as you have. And now with processors, uh, you know, on my computer, uh, not this one, but my my other computer, I can get up to 64 gigabyte. I can use up to 64 gigabyte, and I do uh, reserve that to, to keep it from page faulting. You know, and you can actually even put the scratch files, keep the scratch files on the RAM as well. So it can, it can use all the RAM if that's what you need. Okay, great. And I'm going to ask actually one more, John. Does restart help if you request different set element or node stress load recoveries in later runs for the same model? Uh, yes, I mean if you're again, it's if all you're doing is requesting uh, requesting more data, it, that that's what that's the benefit of doing a restart. Okay, if all you're doing is asking for more information, whatever that information is, you're not changing the model. Uh, and especially if you're not uh, adding load cases, which adding load cases, as we saw, that it's, it's not really time consuming. But once it's done, you can you can uh, ask for different anything, any any output data, strain, uh, displacements at nodes, um, uh, relative displacements. You can ask for anything, any output, and and it's just going to be a matter of a second or less. We do have quite a few other questions, and we will make sure to address the rest of the questions offline. So please be assured. And due to the limited time we have for these events, we can only show you certain features and benefits of the solution. Therefore, if you have additional questions after our presentation, are interested in a one-on-one -on -one consultation or training options, please contact us at 949-481-3267, extension 2001, or email us at solutions at saratechinc.com. And just a reminder once again to view this webinar once again you can go to the saratechinc.com website to view any past webinars this concludes our meeting today please take a minute to fill out the survey that will pop, pop up on your screen we appreciate your opinions and use your feedback for future webinars thank you so much for joining and have a great day